every so often we get a little sign. And that sign tells us that we have the ultimate power of the universe and it's got our back. It likes us. No matter what you have been told, no matter what judgments have happened in the past, no matter what your diagnosis might be, there is a divine being, an all-powerful being that actually likes you and showed up on the earth as you because you were what was needed in the moment. And that's what that song reminds me of. It's, it's God's way of putting his or her hand on my shoulder and saying, it's okay, we're okay. And that is something that I think most of us need to hear and remember throughout our lives, that we're not alone. Ernest Holmes said that the one problem that really all problems can get, down, get boiled down to is a belief in separation, a belief that we're separate from our good, from our God, from each other. And the healing is always a realization of oneness. So that's what that song reminds me of. And I hope I can share my my good luck song with you. It usually means something wonderful is about to happen, too, at the, at the level of, real, of physical reality. So this week was interesting. I went to a Catholic mass, which happened to be a funeral for a friend of mine. And I've been to them since I ceased practicing Catholicism, and I have found them beautiful and good and wonderful. This time I was just plain uncomfortable because I felt very separate from the people who were there. I was uncomfortable in part because I no longer knew the words to the mass, though the responses have changed. I no longer knew what was coming next. And so that little bit of separation that I was perceiving, whether it was there or not, that creates some troubled waters for me. Now, metaphysically speaking, water is emotion symbolically. And so when we have troubled waters, what we really have is feelings that are icky, feelings that are angsty, feelings that are kind of roiling. And I think maybe there's a few that have been going on this summer and throughout the country and throughout the world. So we come together to be the bridge, the bridge that gets us across what looks like a chasm of separation and allows us to remember that love is the truth between all souls. Now, it was interesting. I didn't I didn't object to most of what was in that mass. I mean, there's some phraseology that I wouldn't use because we don't believe in sin, sickness, and death. We absolutely don't uh, believe in even the possibility of hell. So as I was listening to this and just checking in with my feelings, because when I get irritated like that, I know it's in me. It's not what's going on out there. It's what I think it means. And the priest who I know and love, Father Ralph is a great guy. Um, he was he began his homily, which is what we would call a sermon or a talk. He began by talking about how the number one fear of all people is death. And I've got this s- smarty pants in the back of my head that says, actually, according to uh, a lot of polls, it's actually the fear of public speaking. So the only happy person at a, or the only comfortable person doing a funeral is the decedent. And I had to think about that for a few minutes. It represents this, this fear of death represents a belief in separation. And it represents one of my old ways of thinking. And one of the ways I know that my old ways of thinking no longer fits me is it begins to irritate me. So I'm grateful to know that this whole fear of death, fear of separation thing is at least a very old belief that I am releasing. That that song was perfect, Jackson. We're letting go of the things that no longer serve us. It does not serve us to believe in, in separation. Ernest Holmes also said, we've learned enough from suffering. It's time to learn from joy. 
we could still learn from suffering, and we do, because that's kind of how we know how to do it. But we don't have to learn from that anymore. We can learn by being pulled by our vision rather than pushed by our pain. We can learn from our joy and let that be the beacon that pulls us across that perceived chasm that isn't really there. And this is just one of the things that allow us to, to move about in the world. Now, there are what we call 12 uh, bullet points, I guess, in what we call the Declaration of Principles. This was written back in 1927. And it was spurred by Ernest Holmes, who was our founder, being asked what exactly we believe. And any of you who have been asked that and don't have an elevator speech, it really helps to have one. When I, uh, I answer the question, I say we're a multi-faith uh, philosophy or a philosophy that, that pulls from all faiths that helps us live our lives in a more happy and uh, expressive way, a more um, a more successful way. So one of the, the bullet points on that um, declaration of principles is we believe the ultimate goal of life to be a complete freedom from all discord of every nature and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. Let me read that again. We believe that the ultimate goal of life is complete freedom from all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. And so in our faith philosophy, what we say is that we are evolving out of the need to believe in discord, the need to be contentious. Now we have an election that's actually already started, and I am so grateful to see that there are overwhelming numbers, that there are record-breaking numbers of people voting. I'm not asking who they're voting for, but people who choose to stand up and speak their word, as we have discussed in the past, it is ours, it is our power, our responsibility, and our authority with which we speak our word. And at the level of, of, the, of effect or the physical world, one of the ways we do that is by voting. We speak our word. We don't just hide it. We don't hide from it. And so as I see all these beautiful people coming out into choosing to claim this country as ours, in people coming out all over the world and choosing to take care of their brothers and sisters in the Christ consciousness by by keeping six feet, but six, six physical feet between us, but absolutely no emotional space that is unhealthy. We, what I find is that as we step into that power, it responds to us. It's been waiting for us. It's like somebody who absolutely knows they nailed it for your birthday and they got exactly the right gift and you're finally going to open it. This is exciting. Now, voting has started here, in, <clears throat> excuse me, here in America. But I'm willing to bet that on November 4th, or actually, since we have to do a whole bunch of counting, maybe December 4th, it isn't realistic to believe <clears throat> that if your guy won, everything is going to be unicorns and puppy dogs. Or if you, your guy lost, it's going to be Armageddon. That is not, that's just not the truth. We have real issues to deal with. Whether you're in America or not, society as a whole is evolving. And that requires a little bit of cognitive dissonance and turmoil. It requires those troubled waters to get our attention. And we can build a bridge and get over it. God, I'd like to get over it. But we don't pretend that that water doesn't exist. We allow it to be information that is coming to us. And what is the bridge that helps us get over those troubled waters? I would suggest to you that it comes with two separate words. 
One of them is forgiveness. And that doesn't mean what you think it means. Don't turn me off. <laughs> forgiveness in our tradition does not mean we let the bad guy off the hook. Does not mean we have to take our abuser to lunch. Does not mean that we're condoning any behavior by somebody else at all. Or even bad behavior on our part if we self-forgive. When I say forgiveness, and I am speaking in terms of the science of mind, which is one of the names of this philosophy, I flip the word. And I know that God, by whatever name, is giving, in place of my pain, is giving grace for my pain, for my resentment, for my sense of woundedness or, or wounds in general. And so... To forgive means nothing about anyone else. It means that the spirit within me is ready to be free from pain, is ready to allow the wound to heal. The person I'm forgiving doesn't even need to know I'm doing it. The person, unless that person is me, it would be good if I knew what, when I talked to myself, if I listened. But think about that in terms of um, somebody who might have wounded you. And it might be a soul wound. It might be a core wound in your life. If you knew that our process of forgiveness would free you from the pain of that, would you be willing to do it? Doesn't mean anything about whoever the, did the wounding. It just means you get to be free. Freedom from discord within, which is where it always resolves to. So whether somebody else wounded you and you are trying to deal with that wound or it's you've internalized some message you got at some point in your life. If you've internalized that wound, will you be willing to build a bridge of forgiveness so that you can get over it? So you can so you can maybe have a scar, but no longer an open wound so that you can no longer live in pain. That is the bridge that takes us over that chasm that feels like separation. Now, here's the other thing. We absolutely know and believe that because we share one mind, because there is what Emerson called the oversoul that is expressing itself, that has taken form as each and every one of us, because we believe that exists, we absolutely know that the power of the divine is available to heal anything i don't care what the doctor said i don't care what your mother said about you i don't care what society might have said about your mental illness physical illness skin color gender identity um whether you're lazy wet the or you were judged as lazy perhaps because nobody recognized your learning disability or or your depression or any of that i don't care about any of that the divine within you has the power to heal that wound. People come to me with heinous stories all the time and think that they are going to be the one person I think spirit does not exist in. It has not happened yet. I don't expect it could ever happen because that's just against the laws of metaphysics and physics as a whole. So, we get to build a bridge of forgiveness. And that is something that this entire world needs right now. If you listen to the experts, the number one challenge facing the entire planet right now, believe it or not, according to risk management folks, it's not even climate change, although that's huge. It's the rise of white supremacism all around the world. It's the rise of neo-Nazis. And that speaks to a huge belief in separation. Oh my God, we have the thing that can heal it. We have the power to heal that right here and now. By remembering that, you know, the whole thing about white supremacy is built on fear. Fear that we're not enough. Fear that we as white people, not that I'm, I'm claiming Nazism or anything, but if I were a white supremacist, I would be working from the belief that I must be separate because I can't afford to look at who I am in my wholeness. 
there's a great deal of shame. There's a great deal of fear that goes along with that type of us and them thinking. And so what is ours to do, what is ours to do according this, to this philosophy is to build that bridge. And we have to start by forgiving the people we disagree with, by forgiving them for their pain and the way they're expressing it. I'm not condoning it. Remember, that's not what forgive means here. I'm not condoning any part of it. I'm not condoning any of the bullying that goes on by anyone. But what we can do is look into our neighbor's yard and if the sign in their yard makes us afraid of them, if the sign doesn't happen to show, you know, our beliefs, if it represents a religion we don't know or understand, if it represents a country we don't understand or a way of being in the world that we don't understand, that we might feel separate from, what's ours to do is to heal that separation by giving grace in place of the pain or in place of the fear. So what is grace? Grace is that thing that made Darius play Here Comes the Sun for me today. I don't know I don't know if you know this, but that song was just for me. The rest of you weren't even supposed to hear it. It was just for me. Or maybe a few other people that needed to hear it. Grace is that is completely unearned. If you earned it, it's not grace. Or if you think you can earn it, it's not grace. If you have to earn it, that's not grace. Grace is unearned, undeserved good. Because deservingness doesn't even come into play. It is what happens when a being that loves you and just thinks you're the cutest thing ever. And you're beautiful and you're good and it does not agree. It won't even hear from the people who are your detractors, especially if that detractor is you. Grace is what happens when we finally open that birthday present I talked about earlier. It's the perfect gift. It's the one that fixes everything else. And so I'm going to ask you, what are we doing to build that bridge of forgiveness? What we need to do is allow grace to happen. There's an allowing. There's a surrendering of the wound. We have to be willing to do that. And yes, I know that's a hard thing to do. People are probably shaking their heads at the at their, their devices right now going, Reverend Kathleen, that's ridiculous. I've been trying to get over this for 20 years. I hear you. I've had wounds that it took me decades to get over. I've had losses. It took me decades to even begin to, to grieve and to mourn. We need to do the human mourning but we also need to do our divine right. We need to exercise our divine right to heal and to get past. So one of the things I, I recommend is to remember the word push. You just push your way through it. Push means pray until something happens. I promise you, your prayer is heard because it doesn't have to go anywhere to be heard. The divine is already within you. And because I know that and because I believe that, I'm going to pray in the way that religious science or the science of mind teaches us to pray. This is an affirmative prayer. What this is doing is not saying, oh, God out there, separate from me, please fix this because I'm somehow broken. Or someone else is, of course, the one who's broken, right? It's never us. Okay, maybe I'm the only one who does that. When we go to prayer, we remember, we say what God really is and let go of the old idea by speaking truth. And then we remember that we're part of that. We claim the good. We recognize, we realize that that good is already in our lives. We give gratitude and release it so that the law of what some people call the law of attraction or the law of cause and effect, our thinking is the cause, our physical world is the effect. This is what we do to create that bridge. These are the steps. So I'm going to do that now and I invite you to join me in whatever way is comfortable for you. I like to close my eyes because it helps me stop checking my hair and stuff like that. So just be with me now in consciousness, knowing that God is truly all there is. God is energy. It is life energy. 
and it is the entire universe. There's no place where there's no atoms. Nature abhors a vacuum. And wherever there's an atom, wherever there is energy, that is something we call God. That is something we call the divine. And because that is true, I and everybody hearing this and everybody who ever needed to hear this is part of that God, part of that good right here, right now. Across all time and space, all beings are part of the Christ consciousness, that oneness. Because that is true. What I know and claim is that peace is our divine birthright. And we are forgiven for all of our errors in thinking, all of our errors in judgment. We are given grace. We are the place where grace shows up and that shines a light on anything we perceived as darkness and shows it for what it is. Shows that love is the truth between all soul and separation never was. Shows that we are standing in the light of truth and the shadows don't get to argue with that. They simply cease to be. They go back to the nothingness from which they came. And standing in this light, standing in this grace, I know and claim perfect abundance for all of us. I know and claim peace and joy and an absolute sense of the power that lives in us, through us, and for us in every moment. I know that this is the truth, and so I am grateful. I celebrate the truth of all that spirit is and all that spirit is revealing here on earth. All of the good, all of the healing that is the hallmark of spirit's presence. Knowing this to be true, I ask that if any of this has resonated with you, say with me, and so it is. <laughs>